Today we will learn about internet services. Okay students, first let me introduce you to internet. Internet is one of the best technologies gifted to mankind. It has brought the entire world closer. Internet stands for International Network. It is the largest computer network in the world connecting millions of computers. A network is a group of two or more computer systems linked together to form a global network. These computers are connected through telephone wires, modem, satellite links or other means enabling them to share information amongst each other. The invention of internet has transformed our living. It has revolutionized the whole world and made computers the most effective communication tool. Communication has given rapid growth to business worldwide. Internet is a constantly evolving tool that not only contains huge variety of information but also provides new ways of interacting and connecting with people. Students, let's know more. The World Wide Web refers to a network of sites on the internet which contains information in the form of text, pictures, animation and videos. This information can be accessed by people all over the world. Let me explain you about the ways to connect to the internet. To connect your computer with internet, you need a modem, a telephone line and an internet connection. Modem Modem stands for Modulator Demodulator. It is a device that allows a computer to send or receive information through telephone lines by converting digital data into an analog signal used on telephone lines. Modulator converts digital information of a computer to analog mode at transmitting end and demodulator further converts back the analog signals to digital at receiving end. Modems can be classified as Internal modem is a device that is already installed in the computer. It is in the form of a card that is inserted into one of the slots on the main board. External modem is a modem that is installed outside the CPU. It is in the form of a box that is normally connected to USB port of a computer. This type of modem has indicator lights that display the status of modem. The speed of a modem is measured in BPS and KBPS, kilobits per second. Although a modem can have a maximum speed of 56 kbps, but if the telephone line quality is not good, it will not be able to work with its maximum speed. PC card modem is specifically designed for laptops and handheld computers. It is similar to the size of a credit card and fits into the PC card slot on notebook and handheld computers. So no cable is required other than the telephone line connection. One can remove this modem when it is not needed. Except for its size, PC card modem is like the combination of external and internal modems. This card is powered by the computer. Students know that nowadays it is not essential to have telephone lines for setting the internet connection. It can be replaced by a wireless router which is connected to the modem. The wireless router allows you to connect your internet connection with any wireless device such as a laptop, smartphone or iPad within home network. It takes the information from the modem and delivers it to your computer. Let me share a fact with you. USB, Universal Serial Bus Port, is a small rectangular port on the CPU used to attach all kinds of devices such as mouse, keyboard, printer, digital camera, modem, etc. to the computer. It can be used to transfer data and can also act as power supply for devices such as phones, cameras connected to it. Telephone Line a telephone line is a medium that is used to connect the computer to an internet service provider, ISP. Students know the fact. An internet service provider, ISP, is a company that gives access to the internet in exchange for a fee. The browser will not be able to display pages unless the computer is connected to an ISP. Example, BSNL, SIFI, Airtel, Reliance, etc. Internet Connection an internet connection is a service provided by an internet service provider, ISP, in exchange of a fee. You will not be able to access internet unless you subscribe for a connection with an ISP. Some of the most popular ISPs are BSNL, Airtel, 
Idea Cellular, Reliance, Sifi, Vodafone. Let us learn about various types of internet connection now. Several types of internet connections exist that enable us to connect to the internet. Dial-up connection. Dial-up connection requires users to link their phone line to a computer in order to access the internet. This particular type of connection does not allow users to make or receive phone calls through their home phone service while using the internet. Broadband connection. As the term suggests, this connection uses wide bandwidth, which provides high-speed internet access through various transmission mediums. It is significantly faster than a dial-up connection. Using broadband, you can share videos, download music, programs or photos within no time. Unlike a dial-up connection, a broadband connection does not tie up your phone line, so you are free to make and receive calls while online. Cable TV Connection This type of connection is provided through cable TV lines. It uses a cable modem which provides extremely fast access to the internet. Satellite In areas where broadband facility is not yet available, satellite connections are used. This requires a satellite dish to be installed in order to connect to the satellite. DSL – Digital Subscriber Line A DSL uses two-wire copper telephone line. It allows you to make calls even when you are connected to the internet. It is a form of broadband connection where you are required to pay a monthly fee to an ISP for accessing the internet. Wireless Wireless connection makes use of radio frequency to connect to the internet and offers great speed. It can be accessed from any location that comes under the network coverage area. It requires a Wi-Fi modem to be connected to your computer. Mobile Internet Mobile Internet allows a user to access internet over a smartphone using the network provided by the phone service provider. This technology provides high-speed wireless internet access. The speed generally varies between 2G, 3G and 4G. Hotspots Hotspots are sites that provide wireless internet access over short distances, approximately 20 meters. It uses Wi-Fi technology and allows the users to connect to the internet through radio waves. Hotspots can be phone-based, commercial or free to the public and can be found at places such as airports, universities, cafes and hotels. Students, let's know more. A web browser is a software application or program that allows you to access the entire information available on the web. You can visit any website by entering its URL in the address bar of a web browser. Browsers make it very easy to move from one website to another. Now let us talk about the popular services on the Internet. There are many facilities available on the Internet which make our lives better. Some of the widely used Internet services are Video Conferencing A video conference is a communication that involves exchanging audio and video at the same time between people sitting at geographically different locations. The participants can view each other on their monitors as well as hear voice-over speakers of their laptops or desktop computers. It involves the use of camera known as webcam as well as a microphone at the end of each participant to capture video and audio data in real time. Images and sounds are transmitted through internet and delivered to other participants. This technology is mainly used for virtual meetings among a group of people to discuss political, business, medical or social affairs. Many a time we see on the television that a program host is conducting interview among several participants sitting in different cities and countries. This is done through video conferencing. Popular video conferencing applications include Skype, Adobe Connect, Ovu, Yugma, Ekiga, etc. Chatting A chat is a text-based communication between one or more users in which messages are exchanged back and forth in real time through a chat software. Chat messages are generally short just to enable other participants to respond quickly. Chat is also known as online chat or internet chat.
Chat not only allows you to exchange text messages, but it also allows you to interact with other users through voice and video chats. There are various types of chats available on the internet. One can chat through instant messenger, a chat room, a chat website, etc. However, most of them require the user to get registered first. Students, time for fact file. The first online chat system was called Talkomatic, created by Doc Brown and David R. Woolley in 1973 on the Plateau system at the University of Illinois. Internet Free Calls Another feature in the cap of Internet is that it lets you make free voice calls and video calls to anyone across the world. You can make free calls at much lower rates to anyone and anywhere in the world. Some software even allow you to send free messages and videos along with free internet calls. The only condition is that the particular software or application should be installed in the devices at both the ends. After installing the software on a mobile or computer system, you need to create an account on it. Examples of such software or applications are Skype, Viber, Fling.com, Tango, Reptel, and Google Hangouts. Students, let us learn about email. Email stands for electronic mail. It is a facility on internet to compose, store, send and receive messages to any part of the world. The convenient simplicity and affordability of sending mails on internet has totally changed the correspondence system. Email is the fastest way of sending mails where the postal address details like name, address, city, state, pin, country etc. have been replaced by the email address. The email address is given in the format info at kips.in. We can also attach photos, videos or other important data along with our message. Some of the popular sites which provide the facility to send or receive mails are www.yahoo.co.in www.gmail.com www.redifmail.com etc. Let us find out how to use email. To use email facility on the internet, first we have to create a personal email account. We have to select a username, email address and provide a secret code, password along with our particulars like name, address, date of birth, interest, qualification and such other aspects. You have already learnt about all this in the previous class. Some of the commonly used features are as follows. Composing and sending mail. To write a mail to anyone we have to click on the compose option or any other similar option. It will open a new window wherein we type the email address of the receiver, subject of the mail and the text in the body. After composing an email, click the send button on the toolbar. Let me give you tips. We can send the same mail to many persons by typing their email addresses separated by commas. Students know the fact. A strong password consists of at least 8 characters that are a combination of letters in both uppercase and lowercase, numbers and special symbols. Students, now let us talk about netiquettes. The word netiquette has been derived from the combination of two words, net, internet and etiquette, good manners. Netiquette can be defined as a set of rules that govern the acceptable online behavior of the user. The common etiquettes that should be followed while communicating online are General netiquettes Respect others Copyright policy Do not copy the work of others without their permission as it leads to copyright violation. Avoid sarcasm Do not include sarcastic or insulting comments in your communication. Treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. Respect others' privacy. Do not read and share others' information such as their email IDs, phone numbers, photographs, etc. without seeking his or her permission. No spam. 
Do not spread rumors and flood the user's inbox with unwanted advertisements or messages. Students, let's know more. Information is put on the internet in the form of digital pages called web pages. These pages may contain text, graphics, video, audio and links to other pages. Social Networking Netiquettes Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn etc. are some popular social networking websites where your personal information is visible to all types of personalities that may be genuine or fake. Hence it becomes quite important to be extra careful while disclosing your personal information on these sites. Friend Request Always check the user's profile before responding to the friend's request. You never know which unknown person misuses your personal information to embarrass you. Use Privacy Feature While using a social networking website, ensure that your personal information is not displayed publicly. Rather, a particular set of people you require do have the access to your profile. Tune the privacy settings as per your requirement to avoid unacceptable access to your profile status. Do not post pictures of others. You should not upload others' photos on the social websites without their permission. Comment wisely. Never promote anything which is biased or offends an individual or a community's dignity. Report abuse. Always report to your elders or parents if someone harasses or threatens you on the website. Email netiquettes. Email is considered as the most common way of communication at workplace. Hence, it is very important to know the following guidelines while using the email. Subject line. Use precise and brief subject line which carries the main idea and the motive behind the email. Use proper salutation. Make sure your email includes a courteous greetings and closes with your name and signature. Concise message. Try to be precise and non-repetitive while you draft an email. The message should be to the point and must not deviate from the topic. Check spellings and grammar. Make sure your message does not contain any spelling, grammar or punctuation errors. Overlooking the basics of writing leaves a bad impression on the recipient's mind. All caps lock. Never type your message in uppercase as it indicates yelling, shouting and at the very least adding emphasis to the text you type. Autoresponders Autoresponders take temporary care of your emails while you are away from your computer. It automatically conveys the message on your behalf and saves the time of the recipients who could not have called you repeatedly in your absence. Use of BCC feature Make use of BCC message while sending messages to multiple users. Take a look before sending a message. Always go through the email carefully before sending it. Students time for fact file. Flipkart is a popular e-commerce company headquartered in Bangalore. It was founded in 2007 by Sachin Bansal and Binni Bansal. Students know the fact. IRCTC. Visit the site www.ircdc.co.in to reserve and print railway tickets. Ok students, let us take a recap of this chapter. A network is a group of two or more computer systems linked together to form a global network. Modem allows a computer to send or receive information through telephone lines by converting digital data into an analog signal used on telephone lines. A telephone line is a medium that is used to connect the computer to an internet service provider, ISP. An internet connection is a service provided by an internet service provider, ISP, in exchange for a fee. Dial-up connection requires the users to link their phone line to a computer in order to access the internet. A wireless connection makes use of radio frequency to connect to the internet and offers great speed. Mobile internet allows a user to access internet over a smartphone using the network provided by the phone service provider. Hotspots are the sites that provide wireless internet access over short distances. A video conference is a communication that involves exchanging audio and video at the same time between people sitting at geographically different locations.
A chat is a text-based communication between one or more users in which messages are exchanged back and forth in real time through a chat software. Email stands for electronic mail. It provides a facility to attach files for high-speed delivery anywhere in the world. Netiquette can be defined as a set of rules that govern the acceptable online behavior of the user.